What's up everybody? Welcome back to Mohawk Motors. My name is Jason. If you haven't already, help me out. Hit the subscribe button and the bell to get all the notifications every time I post a new video. Today we are building an injector test flow rig. Uh, it's very, very simple. I'm doing it in really what is the least complicated way I can think of. So I'm going to show you everything I'm doing and how I'm doing it and why. Let me show you what I'm using to make this thing. It's very, very simple. I've got a set of four graduated cylinders. I bought these on Amazon. They're cheap. I'll put a link in the description for you. I've got a passenger side fuel rail. I've got the fuel crossover tube with the input. I welded off. I welded shut the feed for the driver's side fuel rail because I'm only going to be testing four fuel injectors at a time. I don't think this is going to leak. It should be just fine. I've got some scrap plywood here. I've got a piece of two by four that I had laying around. And then I'm going to grab the wire harness from a leftover harness from a truck that I parted out for the four injectors. Um, not much to it. I'll show you how I'm putting this together. Okay, so what I want to have happen here is I want my fuel rail with injectors to squirt right down into this row of graduated cylinders. So I'm going to measure 11 and a half inches. And all I'm going to do is cut this piece of 2x4 to 11 and a half inches long, screw one end of it into this plywood, and screw the other end into my fuel rail mount here, factory mount. Uh, that should give me enough flexibility that I'll be able to lift it up to get the injectors out and dump the graduated cylinders, but also enough tension that it's going to keep the injectors pointed down into the graduated cylinders when I pressure up and start spraying. Okay, I've got my 2x4 screwed on. Drill battery died. So while I'm waiting for that, I'll do my wiring. So what I'm going to use to supply the fuel, what I'm going to use to supply the fuel, this is a fuel sending unit out of a 2005 Chevy Silverado. Now I chose this one because it's an in-tank regulator. I don't, let's see here. If you can see right here, that's the fuel pressure regulator. So what this allows me to do is just drop my pump into my five gallon bucket, which I'll put fuel into, and then supply power and ground on a switch. I'll have fuel at the correct fuel pressure coming out of my supply line. I'll run it up and I'll connect that to the feed port on the fuel rail. So this keeps it very simple. It's just a couple 12 volt supplies and a couple grounds. Easy peasy. Okay, got a little sidetracked. I'm back. Let's get back onto this thing. So, I've got my fuel rail mounted up. I'm happy with that. It's firm enough. I don't think I'm gonna have any issues. I've got my four injector plugs. I used a piece of scrap metal and rigged up my two switches. One switch will be for the fuel pump. One switch will be for the injectors. The reason I have them switched separately is so once I turn the fuel pump off, I can bleed all the pressure out of the system using the injectors. Uh, I wish I had a momentary switch for the injectors, but I don't have one and I'm not buying one just to do this. So I have this switch here. I'll just toggle it really quickly when I want to clean and pulse and things like that. So now all I have to do is wire it up. I like to control my circuits on the ground side, meaning I put the switch in the ground path. So the fuel injectors will have power directly to them from the battery. The fuel pump will have power to it directly from the battery, but neither one will have a ground until I turn the switch to the on position, close the circuit, give it a ground. It, it draws, it puts less heat into the switch that way, uh, and that's that's how I learned how to do it at tech school. That's how I still like to do things. So I'm gonna get all this wiring done 
and then we'll throw some injectors in, we'll get some fuel in the bucket and we'll connect the hose and we'll try this thing out. Okay, everybody, I think we're ready for our first test here. Got everything wired up. Got my injector connectors down here. Fuel rail connected. Fuel rail clamped on the hose. Everything set in my bucket. My lower switch turns the fuel pump on. My upper switch is the injectors. So, I'm gonna get the uh, injectors put into this thing, get some gas dumped in the bucket, and get my graduated cylinders sitting under here to see if we can make some fuel flow. Okay, I'm ready to give this thing a shot. I've got fuel in the bucket, injectors plugged in and connected, wiring all hooked up, let's see if it works. Okay, I've got fuel pressure, let's see if we squirt. We do! Now I'm just running gas through it right now, uh, just plain old 87 octane out of the pump, nothing special. And this is actually, this is actually 87 octane out of a truck I parted out this week. Recycled gas, if you wish. <laughs> just got here, uh, just in the nick of time. So my fuel pressure gauge and adapter. So I found this glow shift makes it so I can adapt my fuel pressure gauge directly to the fuel rail here. I'm sure a lot of you were screaming at the cam at the screen. Jason, that's great that you know how much your injectors are squirting out, but unless you know how much pressure there is, you don't actually know how much they're flowing right you are. So, now that our little pressure gauge and adapter are here, we can get these put on and know exactly how much it flows. Adapter tightened down, get my fuel gauge tightened in. Flowing. So it's going to pump. 
pump on. Sounds like we're up to pressure. All right, we got a leak. So I'm gonna pull this off and put some liquid Teflon on it. I was gonna try to avoid that, but it doesn't look like that's gonna happen today. So liquid Teflon it is. Go, a little dab of liquid Teflon. Engage. Yes, it did. We're holding steady right at 58 PSI. So, let's see here. Pump on. Three, two, one, go. One, two, three, four, five seconds. Let's see what we got. Man, we almost overflowed. So we got Call that 72 milliliters. Now let's get our calculator. Okay, so we flowed for five seconds. We got 72 milliliters. So we're going to multiply our 72 milliliters times 12. It tells us we would flow 864 milliliters in a minute. We divide that by 10.5. It says we get 82.28, I'm going to round up, 82.29 pounds per hour. Write that down, and then I'll go on to my next one. Well everybody, here's our finished up test rig. I flowed some injectors on it, it worked really well. Uh, I'm able to flow four at once just to get them cleaned out. I can run some injector cleaner through. Uh, it's at a nice high pressure, so it works really well. And then when I wanna flow individual injectors and make sure my pressure doesn't drop off, I just unplug three and run one at a time. Uh, I really like it, it works really well. So hopefully this helps you out. If you need to flow some injectors, if you need to build your own test bench, you can do this, you can get all these parts at your local junkyard or you pull it yard or if you have a parts truck laying around, they're all right on it. And uh, hopefully this helps. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and uh, we'll see you in the next video.